The Aurora Borealis is a magical spectacle of the frozen north. But despite hundreds of years of investigation, scientists are still trying to unlock its deepest secrets. What causes these celestial fireworks? What can their color tell us about our atmosphere? And why can they suddenly appear over unexpected parts of our planet? The Northwest Territories in Canada are the best place on Earth to hunt down answers. For 240 nights a year, when the sun sets, the northern lights light up this frozen landscape. Aurora hunter Emma Spanswick braves the elements to set up a pioneering piece of Aurora watching technology. Yellowknife has the best chance of aurora. Basically in Canada right now, it's, it's in the perfect spot right in the heart of the auroral zone, and that's why we came. Emma has dedicated her career to revealing the Northern Lights' deepest secrets. She's installing a super wide angled color camera. Its images will help Emma understand why the Northern Lights suddenly appear in the night sky. This is our new color auroral camera that's going out for a test tonight. It's got a 360 degree lens on it, so we should see the entire lake here um, and hopefully some nice aurora. Emma's camera will complement a network of cameras that monitor the night sky across a continent over 3,500 miles east to west. Minus two is pretty comfortable for any temperature for this. So if you get multiples of these cameras and you separate them by the appropriate distance, you can stitch them together um, and make a great view of the aurora across Canada. And that's what we're going to do. The camera needs big horizons to capture as much of the sky as possible. So Emma's frost-bitten observatory is in the center of a frozen lake with no mountains, no trees, and no buildings blocking the view. Once the camera is installed, all Emma can do is sit back and wait for the aurora to appear. This is absolutely part of the life of an auroral chaser. <laughs> you need a lot of patience in this line of work, but it'll come out. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius, and it's going to be a long night. That's because Emma doesn't know exactly when the lights are going to appear. The northern lights are driven by our sun. 93 million miles away, the surface of the sun throws out a constant stream of charged particles called the solar wind. Left unchecked, this wind could strip away Earth's atmosphere and extinguish all life on the planet. But luckily, the Earth has a magnetic field that cocoons the whole globe. The magnetic field funnels the solar wind's energy towards the Earth's poles, where it excites the gases in our atmosphere and produces the spectacular lights we call the aurora. For four hours waiting in the cold, Nothing happens. But at 10.45 p.m., Emma's camera captures the first glimmer of what the lights have to offer. This is exceptionally good news. Very exciting. These time-lapse images reveal a sky alive with color, dancing to the solar wind's beat. And this video footage reveals sweeping bands of brilliant green light as it unfurls across the night sky. It looks like it's going to brighten up, running right across the sky, almost horizon to horizon. Emma will be up all night taking photos of the aurora as she investigates what makes the lights appear. Because every few hours somewhere on Earth, for reasons not yet fully understood, 
the aurora suddenly burst into life. And once a decade, the lights can become supercharged into an even more spectacular show. They appear suddenly in places completely unexpected. Even as far south as Cuba, Aurora hunters are trying to discover what forces these Arctic light shows down to the tropics. The first time I saw the Aurora um, was really in Alaska. I just stood out for well over an hour in these freezing, freezing conditions and uh, just enjoyed this totally spectacular sight. In Washington, D.C., Aurora hunter Nikki Fox is investigating why, for their most spectacular displays, the aurora appear where they're normally never seen. If you want to see the aurora, you really do have to travel north, um, somewhere cold. But those are more the events that happen almost every day. But from time to time, we have these huge solar events that can drive the aurora down towards the south, towards the equator. Nikki's office is NASA's Goddard Space Center in Maryland. She's investigating one of the most extreme aurora on record. Just before Halloween 2003, a massive storm erupts from the surface of the sun. Huge aurora followed just days later. And what made it so spectacular was it was one very large event, and then just after it came a second big solar event. These solar eruptions reveal billions of tons of high-energy plasma heading straight for Earth. It's sending all of this material streaming away from the sun at millions of miles an hour right towards the Earth, and we're ready to take the impact. So we knew two to three days after these events were first seen on the sun, something big was going to happen at the Earth. When the solar storm hit, Aurora exploded where they're normally never seen. It was, you know, at night, it was 11 o'clock at night, so it was dark, and I looked out and I thought, why can I see a sunset? And I realized that what I was seeing was the red glow in the sky to the north of me, and there it was, a beautiful red aurora. Nikki saw the 2000 Halloween aurora in her backyard in Baltimore. It gave a clue to why massive solar storms push the aurora so far south. When it actually comes to the Earth, it is carrying a magnetic field in it, and the Earth also has a magnetic field. When they're in opposite directions, they actually connect. This sudden connection between the solar storm and Earth releases huge amounts of energy into Earth's upper atmosphere. Unleashing the aurora across huge bands of the northern hemisphere. Lighting up continents that normally remain shrouded in darkness. But these storms create more than beautiful light shows. They can have dangerous consequences. By the time we see Aurora light up the night sky, it may already be too late.